was the vision we started. I've been here 33 years. I've been Chief 12. I, can, I love this department. I love this town. I could probably do a presentation that would be two, three, four hours. But what I decided to do is uh, ensure that I answer the specific questions about, no, I'm not going to do the four hours. Uh, I decided to answer the specific question about crime statistics and just give you an overview from my perspective, the way I have seen this town grow and, and how the police department has grown uh, over my 33 years, and especially my last uh, 12 as chief. I think everybody remembers where they were on September 11th. We do a, a lot of training. We do a lot of things came out of it. A lot of national issues. Those have been here a very long time, and I think I'm not a history buff, but history does tend to repeat itself. The old members of the council remember the Rodney King meeting. Uh, there was the conversation about police community relations and African Americans was going on then, and it continues now. We've learned a lot from national events. Those have been around a long time. You remember the Columbine shooting, and if you were in law enforcement. At that time, and we learned a lot from that tragedy, we learned that you don't wait to go in. At that time, it was waiting for SWAT, secure the building, we change. Now we do what's called an hour in formation, when we have three people, and we go in. Fortunately or unfortunately, we've had a lot of circumstances in this town that have lent themselves to experience and training. I, the people from around the county, from around the state, from around this country who I've worked with, since actually 1999, when they ask about this town, I say, you take any city that's, and you scrunch it into 2.86 square miles, and we have a little bit of everything. And we've had a lot of things that have trained us as police officers. Many of you remember the white supremacist that marched in 2000, 2001. And we always ask for help. Just like this past weekend, as the mayor said, we're never afraid to ask for help whether it's training or equipment from the county, that mobile command bus that you saw, which is kind of provided, the drone up in the air that checked all the, uh, did all the surveillance on all the rooftops. Uh, that was provided by the county. We trained with the New Jersey State Police. We have a rapid deployment team. And we train and are given training from the Department of Justice, which is a federal agency. Uh, unfortunately, and, and Michelle, I, I believe you'll remember this, we had a death in custody. We remember back in 1987, we had Anthony Jackson die in our custody. And we went through everything that occurred at Ferguson. We had the Department of Justice. We went through training. We were looked at as a police department to determine if we had anything to do with that then. So those experiences, though not so great, uh, I think they lend themselves to a police department that is pretty much ready for anything. And anything else that comes out, we, we look every day. I don't know how many of you watch New York City today and that explosion. It's on the meth lab. You know, New York City has been a great partner for training. We send people in for hybrid training. Again, I could talk for hours on training alone and experience, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview. This is really my perspective of how the town has changed for the better. Uh, I went to the community theater as a kid, but I also remember when it was going downhill, and anybody that remembers his final days, there was a gentleman that had two great things that were running through that building, and they went to the bathroom there, and by the time that place closed, it was, it was pretty much a disaster, and I remember when, and I always attribute the turnaround in this town to the impact, and I think the development on uh, Catano Island, and that's just my perspective in my eyes. Um, and now it's a beautiful facility, Speedwell Avenue, we, when I first came on the job, they called it the hole. It was a hole. It was just a big hole in the ground. I remember one of my first uh, falls was someone that came down the Tano Avenue and went through the fencing and went, and it was a rollover and the individual was in trap. And now, now it's a high regency. It's talked about making a beautiful final park. 110 South Street was my headquarters. And it was leaky and it was drippy and there was no windows, and then 1996 or 97, we moved here, and the mayor knows that 110 South Street sat vacant for a very long time, and now look at it. I mean, all you have to do is go down the street. Epstein's and Bamberger's, you know, I remember, you know, we always talk about traffic and how difficult traffic is in this town. Well, there was a time that 
You didn't worry about traffic, because there was no traffic in this time. And I drove as a patrolman and as a sergeant, as a lieutenant on the road, and watching Epstein's close and Bamberger's close, and it was sad. I don't think, I think there was two storefronts on the North Park Place that were open at one point. And people were talking about this town dying. And I think, Michelle, you remember that, the mayor remember that, anybody that's been around for more than 20 years. So sometimes I hear people come up to the microphone and say, I've lived here four or five years, and they don't know what it was really like 20, 25 years ago. When it was really struggling. The green has always been a center activity, and as the town went, the green, you know, the, the green was a place where there was not so good activity going on, and the town was not doing so well. And there was a time when the Morristown Police Department was considered very behind the times, and now we're considered cutting edge. This is actually, I, I'm not a history buff, but if you ever want a, a, a good history lesson in town of Morristown, uh, go to the local history section uh, in, at the Morristown Township Library. When I first came on the job, and, and they still hired police officers as a result of the Kramer versus the town of Morristown, the Morristown Police Department, and the library, they have hired police officers since then. And I took the time to go through the, uh, the archives. This is actually one of a three-part series. Uh, and the caricature on the right is the perception of the author of a Mars Township police officer. The caricature on the left is a Mars Town officer. I think we've come a very, I'm sorry? That's from 1971, but I can tell you when I got on the job in 1983, that was the perception of the Morristown Bureau of Police. Now, on the good side of that, we were considered the tough guys, the inner city cops. Um, we took care of business quickly. But that was the perception. Now, we're cutting it. You know, we're powered DMS with all our training. We, we have body-worn cameras, and they're 50% of our personnel are deployed, with 100% to be deployed by the end of this year. Um, we train like nobody else. We have, well, first of all, let me go through my table of organization. Uh, I am, I consider myself lucky to have this mayor who dedicated himself when this police department was decimated and we were down to 48, 47, 48 personnel from the previous administration. We are now up to 55 sworn officers, and two, including two that are in the academy. Uh, this is our table of organization. We have two divisions, patrol division and services division which includes the detective bureau, evidence officer. We do at this time have officers assigned pretty much exclusively to the school, which has helped us out tremendously, and the new family justice center. Okay, Mr. Ianico, you asked for statistics. I'm always happy to show statistics like this, which uh, indicate a gradual drop in crime. Um, about 50% average over the last 10 years. When I first made chief, there was a spike, and I, I recall uh, being asked about that, and I said, listen, there are a lot of variables to increases and decreases in crime. And I said, I'm not going to take the blame for the increase because I'm not going to take the credit for the decrease. But there has been, and I think there's a lot of factors. I'm not a criminologist, but I can talk to somebody who does more analytical thinking than I do. But this will show you the brass tacks of how our crime rate has gone down. Now the flip side of that is that even though our crime and our crime rate is going down, our services have gone up. We were about 40,000 service calls, about 30, 35,000 service calls. When I first came on, we dipped down to 29,000. Now we're, we're running close to about 40,000 again because the things that don't show up there are the medical calls fire calls that we go off. If there's somebody that falls in the bathroom, a Marstown police officer is going to be there. And sometimes they don't even have a call in their hand. They ask for a Marstown police officer to pick that person up and put them back in the bathroom. Those are the type of calls we do. The traffic uh, posts that we do are not going to be reflected. Um, all the things we do, when people don't know who else to call, they call the Marstown here. That's a constant throughout this country. Training. We have, and I'm not sure you're aware of this, we have a very unique schedule. We have what's called the Hillside Schedule, which is named after the Hillside Police Department because we borrowed it from them, we took it from them. At that time, 
Many police departments were going to 12 hour shifts. We went to a 10 and 3 quarter hour shift, which built a training day a month into our schedule. It's a 10 hour training day. We just met with ICE. ICE will be training us. That's just an example of ICE, New Jersey State Police, County of Mars. We partner with people like uh, Atlantic Health System, who provided all the Narcan. I know people being shot and shooting in this country are a big issue. We, sh we train more than anybody in this county. And we train to shoot well. We also train to have the confidence not to shoot. I am very proud of the set of circumstances that occurred recently in, in which Morristown police officers, who probably would have been justified to shoot, chose another tactic. They basically did what we've been doing at Morristown since I can remember. We called a phone rush. They rushed them, they tapped them, they disarmed them, and they didn't shoot that individual. I talked about cutting edge. We all carry tourniquets now. That came out of Boston. Because if you if you research Boston, and I consider myself, again, I consider myself a student of policing, they figured out 50 to 100 people's lives were saved because of the ability of Boston police and emergency medical staff to apply tourniquets. Most people would bled out. If you sustain trauma to an arm and a leg, you would bleed out in three minutes. A Philadelphia police officer saved his own life with his tourniquet with the training that we got from the County of Mars and the equipment that the County of Mars provided, and we all carry that tourniquet. So if we go on a job like that, and that's how uh, school shootings have changed as well. It used to be cops go in the hot zone, and anybody that was severely injured was not going to be attended to for a very long time. Cops go into the hot zone, war cops come into what's called the warm zone once it's secured, and we are trained to, do, to uh, be able to address anything from a sucking chest wound to a traumatic arm and leg uh, injury. Obviously, community policing is a very big issue. Uh, that photo on the left is from the 1940s. The Marstown Bureau of Police realized way back in the 1940s that there was a lot of families whose fathers had gone off to war, so they started the Junior Police League, and they had, according to my research, over 400 kids involved. My theory on community policing, and I instruct my officers, it starts from day one. And if you ever want to walk with me in uniform into a coffee shop, you will get what's called the stare. And it's your first opportunity to interact with people. It's a stare based on the uniform. It's a stare based on somebody's poor experience with a police officer. And many people will throw that stare your way. And police officers have a choice from that first day on the job. Am I going to return that stare? Am I going to build that wall between myself and the community? Or am I going to do something as simple as say good morning? I was taught and I chose to say good morning whether I'm in a coffee shop or walking South Street or walking Martin Street and out. And that's our community policing. Our other part of community policing I learned from actually Hackensack Police Department, and that is follow-up phone calls. Whether it's a barking dog or something more major, I have found throughout my career, and I think it's the same in business, even if you have nothing to say to somebody, you have no new information, and even if you have to tell them that there's been no advancement on their case. If you call them up and say, hey, this is the Chief of the Marstown Police, how's it going with that barking dog? People appreciate that. That's our community police. It's, it's interacting with people on a daily basis. I don't know how many of you saw this. I'm very proud of this. As I said, I grew up in this town. I walked down that street uh, on my way to Morristown High School when I was in high school. This is an article in January of 2016, and it basically, I think the word perfect is used twice in the article by residents who moved in here in the last three to five years. I won't say it's a perfect town. I think it's a pretty, pretty nice place to be. Uh, I don't think you have to compare it to what it was when I first came on the police department, but if you compare it to what it was when I first came on, you would really see that it's, it's a really, really So you know, 
I totally went against my training because I never put my back to an old man, this gentleman, the one my back. That's all I think of. You don't get enough.